method to solve the system of linear equations okay so now uh, the method that we will learn today during today's discussion is gauss seidel method okay and we have some other methods as well gauss elimination lu decomposition and gauss seidel method okay this is a quick picture um, a schematic of their procedure and the potential problems and the remedies and they do read this slide for the viva okay like uh, 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 by the end of this uh, term please do read this slide in depth okay so uh, now let us talk about the gauss seidel method uh, versus gauss jacobi method there are different methods available in the literature during this semester we will focus on gauss seidel method if we compare it with the gauss jacobi method you can see the difference here from this picture what is shown in this picture that basically if i have got three equations three linear equations i will rearrange the three linear equations in terms of x1 x2 x3 and uh, for the gauss uh, seidel method what will i do i will update it after every iteration i will update the previous values or the initial guess after every single iteration for example even if i have the first iteration in the first iteration if i have three equations then three sub iterations okay so we will learn it with the help of an example but this is just the comparison of gauss seidel and gauss jacobi at a glance okay so we will discuss it in depth uh, don't worry now uh, let us go uh, to the uh, basic concept can we apply gauss seidel method on any system no we cannot if we apply it randomly on any system there are chances that the results will diverge instead of convergence right so let us read it um the diagonal coefficient in each of the equation must be larger than the sum of the absolute values of the other coefficients in the equation this criterion is sufficient but not necessary for convergence that is although the method may sometimes work uh, this is the equation if this equation is not met the convergence is guaranteed if the condition is satisfied so if this condition is satisfied now what does it this condition says i will explain it with the help of an example but the plan is that this condition must be satisfied so that we say that the given system is diagonally dominant and if the given system is diagonally dominant then the gauss seidel method will give us convergent results and fortunately many engineering problems of practical importance fulfill this requirement the diagonal dominance requirement okay now let us uh, uh, learn this this equation with the help of an example you can see that when i have used a standard notation it looks quite difficult but when i use uh, uh, when i implement it on an example you will find it very easy now i have a system here 8x plus 3y plus z equals 12 2x plus 4y minus z equals 5 minus 6x plus 7z is equal to 1 okay i will highlight the diagonal here this is called the diagonal now i will pick the first row okay what will i do i will pick the first row and the diagonal entry here is 8 the off diagonal entries here are 3 and 1 i will add 3 with 1 i will get 4 4 is less than 8 which satisfies this inequality i'm saying that 3 plus 1 is less than a11 is greater than a12 and a13 which is good okay this criteria is satisfied by the first row of the system now i will go to the second row the second row says 2x plus 4y minus z is equal to 5 now i can see that the diagonal entry is 4 the off diagonal entries are 2 and minus 1 now i will take the absolute 2's absolute absolute means ignore the negative sign consider the magnitude 
substitute. So 2 is 2 minus 1 is plus 1. Okay, I will take the absolute. So 2 plus 1 is 3, which is less than 4. So again, the inequality is satisfied. Let me read the inequality for the second row for you. It says A22 is greater than A21 plus A23, which is true. Next, I will go to the third row. The third row is interesting because here the y term is missing. So I will say 0y, okay? And the diagonal entry is 7. So I will say that 7 is the diagonal entry and the off diagonal entries are minus 6 absolute is plus 6. 0 is absolute is 0. So plus 6 plus 0 is a 6, which is less than 7. So again, the inequality is satisfied. So this given system is diagonally dominant. Now the homework number one is, this is a system given to you, prove it that it is diagonally dominant. So you will do it on the answer sheet as you have been doing and you will upload it on portal. Next, now let us go to the implementation of Gauss-Seidel method. Now we all must know that because this is given system is diagonally dominant, so we can apply the Gauss-Seidel method. The Gauss-Seidel method says that uh, if an initial guess is given to you, then you will transform your system to this form and you will use the inputs in this manner. Okay, let me explain it with the help of an example. After going through the example, when you come back to this slide, you will find it very easy. So let me help you uh, uh, understanding this method. So now you can see here that this is the given system minus 8x1 plus x2 minus 2x3 is equal to minus 20. This is my first row. This is the second row. This is the third row. And I'm sure that this system is diagonally dominant so that I can apply a Gauss serial method. Now, the first step is very important. Please uh, uh, put your finger on the first diagonal entry. Okay, keep it on the left hand side and take the rest of the things of the first row to the right hand side okay and make the coefficient one for example here i had minus 8x1 so i will divide the right hand side by minus 8 next to the diagonal entry is minus 6x2 so i will keep x2 on the uh, left hand side and divide the right hand side by minus 6 Similarly, I will keep x3 on the left hand side and divide, take all the rest of the stuff to the right hand side and divide it by 7. Now I have x1, x2, x3 in the standard form. Can you see that this is what actually they were referring to? And now for my system, I have obtained it like this. For the gauss seidel method, the initial condition or the initial guess is always given to you as 0, 0, 0. x1 is 0, x2 is 0, x3 is 0. That means the trivial solution, which is not actually the case. So we will use the formula to get the actual answer. Now it is an iterative procedure, okay? So what will you do for the first iteration? What will you do? You will use the first equation for x1. For x1, x2 and x3 are given to you as 0. 0, 0. You will substitute these values here and you will get new x1 2.5. You can see initial x1 was 0 but after one iteration you've got a new x1 which is 2.5. Now you have got the formula for x2. For x2 what will you do? For x2 you will uh, write the formula here and re please remember that the beauty of gauss seidel method is that it updates itself after every sub iteration it means that x x1. Now I will not use x10. Now I will use my new x1 which is 2.5 and x3. I will I haven't got my new x3 yet. So I will use the previous x3 which is given to me as 0. So I will substitute it here minus 2 times 2.5 plus 0 and I will simplify it to get the answer. Okay. Now x1 and x2 the new values are ready. So my x3 will use the new values not the old ones. Okay. So I will substitute x1 and x2 here 2.5 and 7.1 uh, 6.6667 and I will get my new x3. Now first iteration is done. It is an iterative process. So my new x1, new x2, new x3 uh, ready. Now I will go to the second iteration and instead of this initial guess, now my new initial guess is 2.5, 7.166 6, and minus 2.76. So let us go to the next iteration. Now my previous values are these. I will again use the given formula which formula this formula okay 
is that I obtained from the matrix and from the system of equations and I carefully checked that the system was diagonally dominant. Otherwise, you can swap the rows to make it diagonally dominant. So this is the standard formula that I have used here. And now what is the uh, next target? I want to find X1 again with the help of X2 and X3 that I obtained in the previous iteration. Now my X1 is ready. For X2, I have the same formula, but now I will use the new X1, 4.0861, not 2.5. Keep it in mind, okay? But now X3, the new X3 is not ready yet, so I will use this X3. This one, minus 2.761905, okay? And for X3, X1 and X2, both new values will be used. 4.08631, 8.155754, okay? So I will substitute these values here and I will get my new X3. Now the error analysis we have already learned during the previous lectures, but we do actually the uh, new or the current values minus the current value minus previous value divided by current value value absolute times 100 absolute relative error so you will do it for all the values x1 x2 x3 all right and now the homework is to perform uh, the third and the fourth iterations okay and now after going through this example and after performing the third and fourth iterations please look at this picture and if you are still not clear about this picture please talk to me and if you are clear even then write me a message so that um, uh, you know i'll be satisfied that you've got the uh, uh, picture uh, you know like uh, the message given in this schematic okay good luck thank you very much